Hi folks, I'm Greg Adamore, your host for Experts of Southern Nevada. And today I have a special guest coming on, Eli Siegel. Siegel, sorry, like the Jonathan Livingston Siegel. He's a reporter and a business reporter, real estate and finance reporter at the Las Vegas Sun. I've been following your articles for some time and appreciate you coming on the show. Sure, thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, tell us what you basically do at the uh, at the Las Vegas Sun and assignments and so on. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, like you said, I'm uh, I, I cover real estate there. That's my primary beat. So within mm -hmm. that, it's the uh, residential housing market mm -hmm. and also the commercial market. So office, retail, uh, industrial, and uh, the multifamily, you know, the apartment complexes and high rises and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's my main coverage area is real estate. Uh, probably 80 to 90 percent of the stories I do are mm -hmm. uh, involve real estate or you know are, are real estate stories. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, it's uh, what we call general assignment uh, mm -hmm. business beat. So mm -hmm. everything from technology to nonprofits to uh, a little bit of aerospace mm -hmm. to uh, all, all kinds of stuff, whatever the editors need. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting, fascinating subject now in Las Vegas where the real estate market's been going up and down the last five years. Uh, yeah, where do you guys see the market? Do you have forecasts for, um, I guess you get as much statistics that we yeah. do and more, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't, I mean, we don't do forecasts at, uh, yeah. at the Sun, but, yeah. but we read everyone, uh, yeah. everyone who does, uh, who, you know, yeah. folks who are doing forecasts. And yeah. basically what we're seeing for, for 2014, as far as the forecasts go, yeah. is that people are expecting, at least for home prices, yeah. just talking about the housing market right now, yeah. people expect home prices to keep going up in Vegas, but yeah. not nearly as fast as they have been for the last couple of years. I'd say for the last three, four months, maybe even five months, mm -hmm. uh, analysts and brokers and agents, they've been saying that prices mm -hmm. will still continue to rise, but not mm -hmm. at the uh, meteoric rate that they have been. Because as, as I'm sure you, you well know that over the last mm -hmm. two years in Vegas, home prices have gone up about 50% for uh, previously owned homes. And mm -hmm. so from about, was it like 120 to 180, you mm -hmm. know, roughly speaking, right. over the last two years. So it's been a, a, a very fast, rise. Uh, yeah. Now granted, it's coming yeah. from yeah. basically nothing because of the real estate bust and the, yeah. and the crash and everything. So yeah. had, a, had a lot of ground to make up, but yeah, it's, uh, it was rising really fast. And, I, and I, even over the last year or so, people have yeah. told me that they're concerned that yeah. it, I mean, it's, been, it's been rising so fast that there have been concerns of another bubble forming. Sure. And some people have said, oh, it's just they're just making up uh, you know, for lost time after the, after the market crash. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, so like I was saying, as far as forecasts go, yeah. people are expecting it to, to kind of tail off a little bit, but still yeah. to, for prices to still continue rising. Sure, it seems like the market's rebounding and getting a little more healthy. You know, we're seeing a lot less short sales and more traditional sales, which makes things a lot easier for the buyers and the sellers. In theory, yeah, there are, uh, like you said, their short sales have gone way down. I think as of a year ago, short yeah. sales were almost half of every deal that was going on in mm -hmm. Vegas for uh, you know for a used single family house. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, almost half of every deal was a foreclosure sale. It was a bank owned property that mm -hmm. uh, you know that banks were selling. And right now I think you know as of the last month, uh, as of the last month it was seventy percent of all deals in Vegas were uh, mm -hmm. traditional sales mm -hmm. between a, just a regular buyer and a seller, no banks involved. Mm -hmm. uh, but even within that 70%, it's, it doesn't mean that every sale now is between you know a local resident to someone who wants to live here. There's still a ton of investors involved, sure. buying and selling homes, flipping homes. Flipping has mm -hmm. actually gone up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's not dying down at all. So mm -hmm. you still have a lot of investors and a lot of people who don't live here who are buying and selling properties. So, yeah. And so it does make it easier in some sense without having banks because doing a short sale as you know, as anyone in real estate knows, mm -hmm. can take a year or more sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes they can go quick, three, six yeah. months, but yeah. I think that would be probably the exception rather than the rule. They're, they're pretty arduous, mm -hmm. intensive, you know, heavy on the paperwork kind of deals, sure. and they, they take a long time. And so with, it's, it's easier now to, to buy a house if you don't have to go through that whole, that whole rigmarole. But, um, but you're still competing with investors who come in with cash and yeah. they buy houses in bulk sometimes, not as much right now as they had been over the last yeah. year or so. But, uh, so there's still a lot of competition for homes. I mean, I, I was just talking to a guy the other day who bought a house and he told me that there were, I think, 12 or 15 other bids on the house and, and he managed mm -hmm. to get it. So within you know a couple of days of the listing going up. So, mm -hmm. so you still see a lot of competition. So it's, mm -hmm. not, it's not entirely made it easier, but I think without mm -hmm. having to go through the short sale process and, mm -hmm. and dealing with banks to buy a foreclosed house, it, uh, it is easier in that respect. Yeah, I've heard some of the hedge funds who are buying uh so many properties out here. I, yeah. I think I heard just this week, I don't know if you've heard anything about it, but it was very hush-hush. I heard that the uh, HUD, Department of HUD, sold like about 1,200 homes that didn't hit the market. 
was very low key. I don't know yeah. if you've heard anything about that. No, I hadn't heard about that. I no. just heard something about that last night. Got leaked out at a seminar I went to. And oh, wow. Said that they sold like about 1,200 homes and they never hit the market and the hedge funds hmm. were buying them. Yeah. Hedge funds, when they buy, a lot of times what they do, and a lot of these guys are, you know, a lot of different theories going on of where they came from. Some of them are uh, execs in banking, but they basically are getting their money from around 1%, and the average mom and dad are having to pay for. So, you know, if they're having a uh, mom and dad are buying a house and, yeah. and uh, just a simple investment, it's good for the economy because they're locals. Yeah. And that money stays in Clark County, which is good. Sometimes the foreign investors and the hedge funds, that money goes out. They'll buy the properties and turn them into rentals. And, right. uh, we've seen a pretty big increase in the uh, amount of investor-owned rental homes as opposed to the uh, traditional uh, owner-occupant, which I right. thought was very healthy for the uh, local economy for people who own homes and rent homes to be Las Vegas residents. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, definitely, yeah. And it's uh, it's funny, too, because there are so many, there's a, there's such a glut of, uh, of rental homes on the market right now that I've actually heard over the last few months that the rental prices are starting to soften a little bit mm -hmm. and there are actually a lot of empty rental homes out there. This is all anecdotal. I, have any, I don't yeah. have any yeah. data to tell you how many there are out there, but just yeah. anecdotally is what I hear. Yeah. And, and um, so a lot of the big, bigger hedge funds and, and in Vegas, that there have been really two primary firms, which is Blackstone Group mm -hmm. out of New York. It's mm -hmm. one of the largest private equity firms in the world. I think it might be the largest private equity yeah. firm in the world. And then also Colony Capital out of mm -hmm. Arizona. They've just mm -hmm. been buying over the last couple of years just tons of homes mm -hmm. and to, to list them as rentals, as you, as you pointed out. Mm -hmm. And they have started, from what, I, from what I'm told, they've started to taper back quite a bit. They're still mm -hmm. buying homes. They haven't mm -hmm. exited the Vegas market. Mm -hmm. And there's still plenty of, uh, plenty of other investors here in Vegas. But those mm -hmm. two firms in particular, they were two of the larger ones buying up homes in bulk. They've started to cut back on their local mm -hmm. purchases mm -hmm. because of the rising prices and the, and the sure. glut of rental homes out there. So it's mm -hmm. a it's a changing market as, as real estate always is. It's mm -hmm. a, a you know I think anyone would tell you it's a it, I think by nature it's a pretty volatile industry, sure. uh, lots of ebbs and flows, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's and a lot of changes. So yeah. whether sure. it's good or bad, or maybe sometimes it's neither good or bad, neither good nor bad. It's just it's just a change. Yeah, so. I think we have time the information and knowledge is very important that's one of the reasons it's so important to follow your column and follow our show and stay informed you know people need to we've had people from core logic we've had uh, from the lead institute we've had marcus conklin and so you know some statistics from that we all share and interpret and that gives some different interpretations of the same data sure but, uh, sure seems that vegas is uh talking about bringing an arena the sports arena there's a talk about a uh, interstate freeway highway 11 i think from Canada all the way down to Mexico. Right, so right. And airport, there's been talking about expanding the airports. And uh, of course, we did have a new terminal open up last year. But it, so it seems like Vegas has kind of reinvented itself. I see cranes on the strip. I see, you know, that uh, Ferris wheels. There's two, two of the biggest ones in the world are coming here. So uh, I guess we're getting a makeover. All the hotels seem to reinvent themselves. So Yeah, that's kind of the Vegas style is to, uh, to knock things down and, and reinvent yourself, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, no, things are, things are definitely picking up in Vegas. I don't, you know, uh, you know, I, you know I've only lived here for, for about a year and a half, so mm -hmm. I wasn't here when the crash happened. But I've, mm -hmm. I've heard plenty about mm -hmm. how slow it got and how, and how bad things were. Mm -hmm. And so I think right now things are definitely, they've definitely improved, mm -hmm. but Vegas still has a long ways to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, Vegas still has the highest rate of underwater borrowers in the country, mm -hmm. uh, has one of the highest unemployment rates in America sure. for a metro mm -hmm. area. Nevada as a state has the second highest unemployment rate in America. I think mm -hmm. as of December was like 8.8%, .8%, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which was, yeah, second, second highest. Mm -hmm. um, People aren't hiring that much. Employers mm. aren't hiring that much. Job growth mm. is pretty, pretty weak. Wages are flat from whatever, from everything I see and hear. Mm. Yeah. So you do have there is progress out there, but but overall, Vegas things are as far as as far as I can tell, things are still pretty sluggish mm. uh, as yeah. far as the economy goes out here. So yeah, there seems to be uh, throughout the country. I mean, some stocks going up and down, and but uh, there's uh, there's two, I guess two sides, uh, almost every, two or three sides to every uh, sure. Position, but I've heard some gloom and doom uh, say that you know 47 uh, million people are on food stamps and almost 100 million are on some form of a government assistance. Some will argue that we're turning into a socialist economy now, uh, the sense of entitlement. And but I know a lot of seniors, and we have a, a baby boomers. Uh, a large part of the population is going towards their Social Security, and it's not enough to really live on with the inflation going on. And uh, I've heard some statistics recently that. Uh, the money is being devalued by 8% because they say that the inflation is about 8%. So a lot of people in fixed incomes are really feeling uh, 
the pitch now that they used to be prices and, and people go to the grocery store you can tell yeah. by chicken or meat or pork or gas whatever it is uh, prices went up and, uh, and price of the income have risen as high to, to keep up with that I think, right know? right yeah I think if you talk to uh, the average person here in Vegas they would tell you they probably haven't had a raise in a long time yeah. uh, for, like I was saying from all the data that I see and from what I hear anecdotally talking mm -hmm. to economists talking to other people who, who yeah. follow this stuff for a living mm -hmm. is that wages are, are by and large flat mm -hmm. and but what's interesting though is that it hasn't stopped, this is kind of on a tangent, but yeah. hasn't stopped people from spending a lot. Yeah. If you look at retail sales in Clark mm -hmm. County that are put out by the state, uh, they have been climbing pretty steadily over the last year mm -hmm. or so. And it's interesting because when I've talked to, again, economists and also financial mm -hmm. uh, guidance counselors and, and those types of people, sure. They're actually pretty worried that because wages are flat, because the economy is still, you know, kind of wobbly, mm -hmm. and spending is going way up, that people are kind of returning to the uh, bad habits of the boom era, which is mm -hmm. buying stuff they can't afford and right. either tapping their savings or sure. maxing out their credit cards or what mm -hmm. have you for uh, to get that car that they want or buy new appliances or, mm -hmm. or um, you know, a new house even. Sure. But uh, so there's it's kind of kind of interesting. Yeah. Some of the people in the last two to four years when you know, when they haven't had a house payment, maybe they've been in a home, and because the banks were illegally or are proceeding improperly with their own uh, foreclosure processes, we've had uh, the Attorney General, we've talked about robo signing, we've had uh, someone from Michelle Johnson's from the Financial Counseling Center come in and talk about some of the programs that they're adjusting to now that the banks are more compliant with the rules and they're trying to uh, not put people out in the street illegally. And so there's uh, changes going on both sides and the legislature has been pretty active with new bills and homeowners bills of rights. So we see a constantly evolving landscape politically and economically here. But some people have said the last couple of years there has been a lot of spending because people weren't making their house payments. They're buying new cars, they're buying right. clothes, they're buying other uh, goods and services. So yeah. it's got to end somewhere. You would think, yeah, that, that's the same thing I've heard as well, is that people are, and, and this has been pretty well documented and reported, is that in Vegas, I mean, there, there are no hard numbers. You can't, you, it's tough, I don't think you could know exactly how many empty mm -hmm. homes there are, but from, mm -hmm. from the estimates that I hear, it's somewhere in the range of forty to 60,000 homes right. that are without power mm -hmm. right now, which would indicate that they're abandoned, mm -hmm. or at least, you know, a good portion of them are abandoned. I'm sure mm -hmm. there are a variety of reasons why they might not have power, but, mm -hmm. um, but, I'm, but a good reason would be, you know, for sure. a good portion of them is because they're, uh, they've been abandoned. Mm -hmm. And, but even when they're not abandoned, you still have people living in their home, essentially mortgage free, right. because of all of the uh, foreclosure processing delays that have mm -hmm. happened in the last couple of years because mm -hmm. of uh, AB 284, the robo signing mm -hmm. law that took mm -hmm. effect. Uh, in fall of 2011, it mm -hmm. drastically slowed down, as you know, the foreclosure sure. process. Banks had to provide signed affidavits of personal mm -hmm. knowledge of mm -hmm. the mortgage history so mm -hmm. that they could legally foreclose on a delinquent borrower because mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. I mean, there were, what, 4,000, 5,000 people a, ho a month losing their homes in, sure. in, uh, in Vegas or I think it was maybe yeah. statewide. It's just sure. a, an astronomical yeah, number. Yeah. That slowed down to just a couple of hundred at one point. It's yeah, sure. since picked back up. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so you have a lot of people because of these processing delays and you know the bank you know the banks having to provide more paperwork sure. if they're not banks aren't foreclosing and they're not and they're in default of their loans they're not paying their mortgage and right. and uh yeah now from what i hear like you said they're uh yeah. people are using that money for that should be for housing on mm -hmm. uh, they're spending it on other things like uh you know appliances and cars and things like sure. that so. and hopefully uh people will be able to save some of that uh, there's a lot of new financing i don't know if you've been hearing anything but i've heard that there's a stated income right now for commercial investors that have um you know they buy rental properties and they look at the cash flows on those and uh they're trying to get that to apply for homeowners as well so not that stated income was bad but what they used to do on stated income now they'll put like uh, and then bringing back carrybacks which is where an owner sells a home and the buyer will come with 10% down, they'll get an 80% new mortgage and a 10% carry back. The seller will carry back 10% and participate in it. And that way, the uh, it's easier to qualify. There's no private mortgage insurance for the new buyer. So uh, with changes in uh, uh, local financing, we're going to see people being able to buy again that before weren't unable to. Right. Uh, some banks are saying one day after foreclosure or short sale, we can finance you. But that's not exactly true. Uh, but that's if you haven't missed any payments. But right, I'm sure there are a lot of foreclosed on or short sale without being behind. Yeah, you know? I, I would guess there are a lot of strings attached to that. Right. From from everything I hear when I when I've talked to mortgage brokers mm -hmm. and people who work in the mortgage industry is that mm -hmm. the days of stated income loans, no doc mm -hmm. mortgage loans, are mm -hmm. essentially over. 
And I, I mean, I've heard anecdotally that that might be coming back, yeah. but it's it's unclear mm -hmm. if that's even true for starters or if it mm -hmm. is how widespread it is. But yeah. from almost everyone I've talked to, it's that you know, you're putting down 20 to 50% sometimes mm -hmm. uh, for a down payment on a house if you're going to qualify for, uh, you know, in order to get a mortgage sure. loan. Yeah. And, you know, rates are going up a little bit right now. They're up, uh, what is it now, 4, 4.5%, four yeah. something like that for yeah. a for a 30-year mortgage loan mm -hmm. up from, you know, 3.5% a year ago, which mm -hmm. percentage-wise is a big jump. But if you think about it historically, yeah. you know, yeah. 25 years ago, interest rates were, what, 16 17% in the 80s? Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe, so maybe yeah. 30 18, years ago. 19, yeah. Yeah, went really high. Yeah, so historically they're they're still kind yeah. of uh, you know basement low, but sure. but they are but they are creeping up. So, yeah. but as far as you know, getting uh, kind of easy mortgage loans like the banks were doing ten you know ten years ago, mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen or heard yeah. about that returning. If 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 it is, then yeah. that's kind of a scary thought. But uh, yeah. but I haven't heard about that. Well, I think they're going to get caught. They'll be a little bit more careful like they do. I know in Canada they twenty percent down. I mean they they weren't really worried about the market collapse like they did here, but. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of strings attached. That's the key thing. And, but they are going to have to encourage more home ownership. Home ownership's at a, you know, historically low period, uh, a low point for Las Vegas right now. I think it's in high 40s, and it used to be in the mm -hmm. 62 or something. So yeah. a lot of statistics out there flowing. But it's important to know these figures and, you know, the articles you write and the reports that we have and our show every week is up to up to date with current events and uh, local experts in the in the field. So uh, we encourage our viewers to stay tuned, keep watching the show, and. Uh, and also, I, I do have our shows, which we'll be putting on my website, thebestlasvegasrealtor.com, for all our f featured guests and uh, dignified guests that come in and share their knowledge. It's always good to be able to access those, so we do put them on our website for our viewers to look at. And if they contact the station or myself, I can get you a copy of the DVD of today's broadcast or any of the guests that you might be particularly interested in. So feel free to uh, give us a call and uh, or contact us at our email if you'd like a copy of any of the shows that we've had. And um, it's, it is important, though, to keep, to keep this timely information. And I tell you, it's just so important because I've been in the business now 35 years. And what was happening two months ago, it's a different market right now. It, it changes, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, very quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and being ahead of the trend is so important, you know. And, and following the laws and staying involved with what the changes will be. Again, I just heard this as of last night that this new financing is coming back. I was pretty surprised. Yeah. Be, but that these things might come about. But I think they're trying to keep the interest rates down mm -hmm. with inflation, the cost of living going up. If the interest rates go up, it could really affect a lot of derivatives, a lot of a big time Federal Reserve money that's been involved in the recovery. So, you know, we don't know if it's going to get really good or really bad, but I think you have to right. um, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And, yeah. you know, I've heard some uh, economists that were speaking at a seminar last night, and they're saying, Get three months worth of food goods and, and, and <laughs> three months worth of water and and and, uh, and a firearm because the things could be chaotic if the wow. banks collapse. And I mean, you, you hear some radical stuff. And of course, I've been pretty optimistic because I've seen Las Vegas, and I know Las Vegas particularly is drawing investors worldwide. It's a unique city with a 24-hour economy. Uh, like you said, we had a 20% increase a couple of years ago, followed by a 30%, and we're still uh, in some cases lower than the cost to build these homes. Yeah. New builders are buying, you're paying so much more for a new home, mm -hmm. and there are advantages, but the price per square foot is significantly higher than a resale, and some of these homes that are resales that I sell are, uh, you mentioned short sales, uh, arduous pra practice, but a, a process, I just, in closing one tomorrow, that took a full year, actually about 13 months. Bank of America finally approved it, and um, it's just a painstaking process. And uh, but the home that I sold in Mountain's Edge was 467 new. Buyers are picking up for 284, and um, you know it does, and that's full market value really because short sales the banks are appraising them now, and, and very few and far between are selling below market. And mm -hmm. what one of the things that's happening on the market now. I'm doing one with Aquin, and they're turning the short sales. Once you have an accepted bid, and they review it, and they have a, a opinion of value and appraisal done, then they'll put it on their website, and then they'll try to get 19 more bids. They have like 6,000 people bidding throughout the country, and so usually every property that goes on the auction gets about an average of 19 bids. Mm -hmm. So it can be a little disruptive to the buyer who's been waiting a year, yeah. got a property accepted, they're very happy with it, and they say, wait a minute, we're gonna put this on an auction and see if we can shop the price higher. So these are recent changes in the last six weeks that the, a lot of the banks are doing. Hmm. They're, they're set up these uh, websites that uh, that will try to drive the prices up. So they want to make wow. sure that they're getting every every dollar that the market can command. Sure, sure. 
But uh, so these things are happening, and a lot of a lot of changes are coming, and uh, from time to time, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's important to to get updated information. Where do you see the market in five years? Have you got any kind of a? Uh, Oof, boy. Uh, it's tough to say in uh, yeah. in a place like Las Vegas. I yeah, that's a tough question. Oh wow, I don't even know if you can predict that. I certainly yeah. couldn't. Yeah, yeah. I have I have yeah. no idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's kind of it's like picking the Super Bowl. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any given day, it might rain. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself. You you what, what brought you into um, reporting and journalism and, and finance this type of subject? You know? Sure, sure. I uh, well, I got I started in journalism in uh, 2006 at uh, a chain of weeklies in San Jose, California, which is, mm -hmm. I grew up right outside San Jose mm -hmm. uh, in a town called Los Gatos. And uh, mm -hmm. so I started freelancing uh, for these for these local community weeklies. Mm -hmm. uh, as I was on, I was getting freelance assignments for probably two or three months or so. Mm -hmm. and, and that was my first exposure to journalism. Mm -hmm. And I, I always enjoyed writing, but I had never had any mm -hmm. formal journalism training or, or experience. And I just started doing these freelance stories. And they they liked them, and they kept giving me more. And then eventually, one of the staff writers quit, and they hired me to to replace her. So I started covering uh, San Jose City Hall for a little while back uh, back home, mm -hmm. and also uh, I was covering neighborhood news in a, in an area of South San Jose called uh, called Almaden Valley. Mm -hmm. And so I did that for about a year total, and then I left uh, the paper in '07, like middle of '07, to go to journalism school at uh, University of Maryland. I got a journalism master's degree out there. So I was out in uh, College Park, Maryland, and also Annapolis, Maryland, for, for about a year and a half total between the two cities. And then after that, I got a uh, temporary job with the Associated Press up in uh, Trenton, New Jersey. I was covering the uh, New Jersey State House mm -hmm. for, uh, for a little while, for about four and a half months. It was a temporary assignment. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I moved back to California, eventually found my way back. Mm -hmm. and started working for a business paper out there called uh, Silicon Valley Business Journal. Mm -hmm. And I spent about two and a half years there, and I did not cover real estate for them as a, as a full-time beat. Mm -hmm. I did cover distressed real estate, mostly mm -hmm. commercial stuff, Chapter 11s, mm -hmm. uh, some Chapter 7s, and, mm -hmm. uh, and also a lot of foreclosures, a lot of REOs. Mm -hmm. and, but my main beats were I was the finance and legal and sports business reporter. And then toward mm -hmm. the end, I started covering government as well so uh, municipal mm -hmm. bonds uh, the airport aviation mm -hmm. private you know general aviation um, what else you know construction projects that kind of stuff tax liens tax certificates you ever get into that type of uh, uh, not really not not into taxes no mm -hmm. uh, covered accounting that was part of my professional services beat but uh, mm -hmm. but as far as tax liens go I mean we would cover mm -hmm. if there were real estate projects that had a lot of uh, mm -hmm construction liens that, that had mm -hmm. piled up against them, then, mm -hmm. then we would, you know, do a story about that if it was something significant. But mm -hmm. um, but that was, that was kind of close closest I came to, to liens as a as In a the topic, Silicon but. Valley, was there like a lot of, that's a lot of, you think of the technology hub and they're yeah. innovative. So. Yeah, a lot of tech out there. Uh, it's not something I covered, but mm -hmm. uh, at least, I mean, I would cover it every once in a while, but because mm -hmm. it was, there was always, or not always, but there was often a tech connection to what I was writing about because mm -hmm. it's not the the Bay Area is not as dependent on tech mm -hmm. as Vegas is on gambling and tourism it's not even close mm -hmm. but uh, but but it is a big part of the economy out there that's for sure yeah. so a lot of stuff's been going on in Vegas lately They've been following some of the articles I've had uh, I guess a little bit of a a little bit of um, uh, news about the uh, rodeo. I guess they're going to keep that in. Right. Yeah. You know, they we almost lost that. They or we don't know. If right. We almost lost it. They, nobody wants to leave Vegas, right? Yeah. They've been coming here what, nineteen, twenty years or something. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't covering that, so I don't know all the details yeah. of the of the uh, yeah. national finals rodeo. But I know that it's a uh, it's a big money maker for for Las Vegas. There are a sure. ton of people who come in here sure. from out of state, and they just cram in the hotels. I mean, there are a lot of visitors who come. Sure. I mean, if you go down to the South Point in particular, mm -hmm. or the Silverton, uh, there are a lot of cowboys who mm -hmm. are staying down there, and the place is just packed, and they are, yeah. they're they at the bars, they're in the restaurants, and they're spending a lot of money here. So if sure. that if that rodeo had left, mm -hmm. that would have been a, uh, I mean, it wouldn't have crippled the economy or anything, no. but it it's a it's a big chunk of money that sure. Vegas wouldn't want to lose. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it's, yeah. A lot of convention business comes here. I think we've got the CES, we've got the electronic right. show, we, we've got the world market for uh, for the furniture stores right. down there. We've got the Ruvo uh, Institute, the 
downtown's got their new art district. I mean, every time I read the paper, I find something new and uh, enjoy following your articles. And uh, I, I know a couple times I've reached out to you and, uh, and, and found some of the articles very interesting and noteworthy and uh, timely. You know? Thanks. So there's so much going on in Las Vegas. It must be fun to, to do your job and must enjoy it. It's a fun place to be a reporter. Yeah, there is mm -hmm. always something going on in here. Mm -hmm. There's always you know, some guy who's got some crazy idea wants yeah. to do something. So it's, you know, it's it's fun. There's always some colorful characters out yeah. here and yeah. a lot of money kind of washing around. And so yeah. it's, uh, yeah, it's it's never dull. That's for sure. It's a it's a great place to, to cover yeah. business. It really is. Yeah. Even if you're not covering the strip yeah. or yeah. casinos or, or tourism, which yeah. frankly, I don't. I, I mean, I sometimes do, but that's not a full-time coverage area for me at all. Yeah. And so, even if you're not covering that, there's still plenty of exciting stuff going on around here for you know to cover uh, for business. Oh sure, I can remember about 20 years ago there was a guy that I thought was kind of eccentric, uh, Bob Stupak. He wanted to build a uh, the highest uh, structure in the west of Mississippi, and uh, yeah. we have the stratosphere. And I've taken a few of my kids up on those rides up there. And I have to tell you, they're terrifying. Don't go there. <laughs> Not just kidding. If you're an adrenaline junkie, you'll love it. But uh, yeah, they got things they throw you off. They got bungee jumping. I don't know what else. They got the Mr. Stuka. Have you ever mm -hmm. been up in that? I have not. No, yeah, I am yeah. terrified of heights, so I, I will not be out there. I would go up to the observation deck, yeah. but that's about it. There is no way that you're going to get me on one of those rides. There's just no chance. Fly, huh? No chance. I know. And, uh, I had my kids take me up there twice, three times. I'm trying to be brave here, and I think, what am I nuts? Am I getting on this thing? You know. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of excitement here. There's roller coasters. There's just uh, so much going on here. Yeah. Entertainment, 24 hours a day. You know, people who leave Vegas, they seem to almost always come back. Yeah. It's just the economy is 24 hour fun and uh, the hotels and the entertainment. So I've loved living in Las Vegas. I've been here almost 50 years. So uh, wow. yeah, one of the jokes I, I told Dale, our station president, is that when I first got here on Buffalo Road, they were Buffalo, you know? And I'm not quite that old, but I did know a man that actually told us that. And, yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun, but uh, yeah, I always hear stories about when people moved here. The town ended at mm, Decatur, or the town ended at Russell Road, or, or yeah. whatever, and it was just mm -hmm. just all dirt beyond that. Mm, and yeah. so it's uh, I can only imagine how how fast it was changing. You over needed the years, a horse so. back then, yeah. or, or a dirt bike to, to get yeah. to some of these places that are mainstream right now. Yeah, I've heard about people who rode around on dirt bikes to get places. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, gosh, it's sure been a pleasure having you here today with us, and I uh, hope to have you back on the, on the station soon. Great. Thank you for sharing. Uh, always a pleasure. And uh, if people have noteworthy news or some commentary that think that they're, they're involved with, can they contact you through email? Or? Sure, sure. Yeah, they can. Uh, you know, if you've got uh, tips or uh, if you know something that's going mm -hmm. on in the real estate market, you can uh, you can write to e l i dot s e g a l l at lasvegassun dot com. Good. Well, thank you, Eli. Appreciate it. And, sure. Uh, Hope to have you on soon again. Thanks and, for having me. Uh, we uh, look forward to seeing you next Tuesday at 5 o'clock at 9.30 right here on uh, TV 17, right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And thanks for sharing with us today. We'll see you next week right here.